Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel with me. It's going to be very exciting. So in this video, I'm going to be talking about Mermaid, the art challenge Mermaid, and also how to find your style or to develop your style. But before we get into that, if you haven't already subscribed, please hit the subscribe button and the big red button below because it would be so useful for me to find out who's watching these kind of videos and yeah it would be great please consider it so if you haven't heard of the art challenge mermaid it is about drawing or painting or however you want to do it creating a mermaid each day of the month of may as i'm sure you'd gather mermaid there is another art challenge which is called Inktober and that one surprisingly takes place in the month of October. And you see there's a lot of theme going here. So, Mame. You're probably thinking, L. I mean I know lockdown has been going on for a while and all of us have lost every concept of time and what day of the week it is, but I can tell you it's, it's not May anymore. <laughs> And you would be right. It's almost July and I didn't do a single mermaid. And I was gutted. So sad. I had a board full of ideas. I was so excited. How could I not? I was going to draw a mermaid every day of the month. That's like the best drawing challenge. And unfortunately, time slipped through my fingers. I had a couple of things, a couple of things, a gazillion things that I needed to prioritize first. But never fear, there is no law to say that I cannot draw a mermaid or paint a mermaid any other time of the year. So I'm here to, I'm endeavoring to challenge this and I will now be fixing the problem. I'm going to be painting my very first mermaid. Now for this, I took several concepts. The one that I went with was the idea of a deep sea mermaid. The idea of, uh, you know, those horrible, <laughs> horrible, like kind of scary looking fish with the massive teeth and they have very um, like almost transparent skin and they have the light bulbs and I'm sure someone knows the name of this fi these fish that I'm thinking of. And they, they look very scary, like the kind of thing you might find in Jaws. Um, well, I was going with that concept, the concept of a very light, truly, truly uh, translucent skinned mermaid that used her hair and body as a lure because of the glow and the light effect. So she lures smaller fish to her. And I wanted to create the idea that she was in this very lonely space. It's black, there's nothing around her. She just lives in a void. And she attracts the fish to her and she likes to keep them as pets because she's lonely. And unfortunately, though well-intentioned, she somewhat neglects them and they die. Now that's my interpretation. Any of you can see it the way you want to see it, that's fine. But that's what I was thinking of when I was painting. And as you can see in the video, I think we can all agree, those teeth were not a good idea. I tried them and then I untried them. And I think that was a better decision. And then later down the line, I tried them again. Didn't work that time either. So for this painting, I'm using the medium of gouache. Gouache, 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 gouache. Can anyone, does anyone know? how we say this word gouache i think americans and english people say it differently and i think i think i'm saying it the american way but that's okay gouache i'm gonna be talking about gouache gouache so gouache is like acrylic and it's also halfway between watercolor so it's it's almost acrylic and it's almost watercolor it is activated by water. Now I talk about this in another video. I go really into the details about how to use it. 
So if you're more interested in finding out how you should use gua sha and my experiences with this brand, which is Reeves, then click on the link above and it will take you to my other video. However, if you're sticking here with me on this video, I'm only going to tell you that Reeves is on the cheaper end of the scale and so the quality is um, suspect. I found it quite difficult because I was using a scrap piece of black paper and as you can kind of see here on the base layers that I've done, the black was showing through the thin layers and the problem was that the more layers I applied on, it was very quick drying. So the more layers I applied, I was finding it really hard to blend because it was drying so quickly. And if I used the water to activate the gouache, then it, it activated the layer beneath and then you could see the black kind of coming through and it was very hard to create an even effect. And I was very pleased because I think I managed to achieve that on this bit that I'm doing now on the ponytail of her hair. That was the part that I think I most successfully managed to blend some of the gouache. And I think that's partly down to, it was neither a space too big nor too small. It was about, it was about right. I also used some other mediums for this. So I used um, some fine liners and I also used some coloring pencils. Now I wanted to talk about style in this video because I was happy with this painting. I was happy the way that it came out in the end. And I think I executed it well for what I wanted to try and create. But it also made me question my style. And you know, then I went on Instagram and I went on YouTube and I follow all these amazing artists. Uh, Lowish and Ergo Josh and uh, Kludvig and so many amazing artists and I was kind of I was watching their stuff and it just made me feel so deflated and I was there thinking I want my stuff to be this good I want it to look this good and I was there thinking I don't think I've successfully done that and I think that was quite harsh on myself, considering this is the second time that I've used gouache. I think that was quite a hard assessment of the final piece, because as I said before, I'm quite happy with it. I was very happy with it. And then I went and saw all this stuff. Now, I don't think necessarily comparing yourself to the artist is a bad thing. It isn't. It can have very many useful benefits, but in this aspect, I took the turn down the wrong way and I was like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, yeah, these people are better than you, Elle. You're just not as good at this. And I felt kind of rubbish. But don't worry, I'm feeling better again. It's all good. I think there is a right way to compare yourself to other artists and a bad way. If you're constantly comparing yourself and you are beating yourself up and you're like, yeah, my stuff isn't as good as this. My stuff is rubbish. I'm never going to be this good. That, that is not useful. How, what are you meant to do with that? That is not a good thing to tell yourself. However, if you're looking at other artists and you love and admire them and you're thinking, I want to try and replicate this in my own work, this standard in my own work, that is only going to push you to be your best self and to create your best work. And that, that is the good kind of comparison you need. And it's not that difficult to achieve. And I think we all can. Now, I was reading a book called Real Artists Don't Starve by Jeff Goins. I think he's American. And I'm just going to read you a quote because I think it's really important in respect to things like I've said, like style. So, creativity is not about being original. 
It's about learning to rearrange what has already been in a way that brings fresh insight to old material. Innovation is really iteration. We learn from those who have come before us and borrow from their creations to make things the world calls original. As Picasso has been attributed to saying, good artists copy, great artists steal. And ironically, I'm sure you've heard that quote a million times before. Loads of people have been attributed to having said it. Good artists copy, great artists steal. And that's not to say I don't want anyone to be going off looking at their favorite artist's work and thinking, hmm, yes, great artists steal. So I'm just going to take this and then copying it verbatim or tracing over it or basically taking the exact same concept. The idea is that you're using the person who inspires you, you're using their work to influence your own work, to build upon what they've already done. So you look at their work and you think, ah, oh, this person has a brilliant use of line work. I really like the way that they've used the thickness of the line here to accentuate the curve. Or I really like the texture they've created using that hatching technique, that kind of thing. And then you think, okay, I'm gonna try that for myself. How can I use that to my advantage? So you look at your own work and you're like, well, I really enjoyed that. I would like to do a drawing about this because I find, I don't know, I find squirrels amazing and I want to draw a picture of a squirrel. So what can I use that my other, art my other favorite artists have used and can I borrow any of their styles or ideas and use them on my own thing? And the answer is yes. Maybe someone has done an art a uh, color palette and you were like I really like this color palette this color palette would be brilliant on this flower or whatever it is so try it the thing that frustrates me about coming into the art community and everyone says or there's at least a lot of conversation about you have to find your style well that's absolute rubbish Finding your style is something that happens when you learn and develop your technique. Please stop thinking that you have to go and find your style, like it's out there, like some kind of magic lamp that you have to find in Aladdin and that you're just going to rub it in or your wishes are going to come true. It ain't going to happen. You have to do the hard graft. You have got to be looking at your favorite artists and trying new things. And that is how you develop your style. Everyone's style is developing. You look at all your favorite artists. They didn't start that way. And their, prob their style probably won't end that way either. Then there are some artists who say, oh, you know, you're really good at pencil drawings. You're really good at realism. At um, ultra, you know, really high, clear realism. Does that mean you can't do anime or whatever it is you want to do no if you want to branch out you branch out because there is so much you can learn from different mediums that will influence and help you understand the one that you're currently doing more i think anime can teach you so much about realism and vice versa about form and about structure and tone so it will be really beneficial for you. Now you're probably gonna lose some Instagram followers or you're probably gonna lose some of your uh, audience because they were looking for that certain thing. But at the end of the day, it's about your development and not your audience. <laughs> if you're stopping yourself because of what people think, then you're gonna hit a wall and you need to be able to push past that. As you can see here with my mermaid, I started to use coloring pencils. I was so happy that I did start to use them. And this is where I start to use that kind of mixed media sort of vibe because the gouache had created like a quite streaky effect. And 
because it wasn't blending very well, I couldn't get the right tones. So I used the coloring pencil to create the right tones. And when I put this, applied this on top of the paint, it actually created this kind of grainy effect because of the streaks from the gouache. And I solved this by taking a cotton bud or a dry paintbrush and gently just rubbing it away on top of the colored pencil layer. And it was brilliant. It worked so well. So if you're stuck, if you don't want that grainy effect, because sometimes it can create really cool texture. I didn't particularly want it. I wanted to blend it more. You can use a cotton bud and it's a really, really good uh, technique and idea. And I was so happy that I used it. So I am feeling, I think, better now about the style that I used. I would like to have made it a little bit more subtle. I'm really looking forward to being able to put it on a laptop and have a play with it digitally. I think that would be really, really fun. And I think I'm going to change uh, the bodice and the hair on the top because I really like her ponytail. But those are the two things that I would change mm, the most. But I think it would look really cool digitally. So I'm not going to beat myself up. I know there are some things that I could change, but there are also some things that I was quite happy with. I'm pleased that I did. And that's the kind of thing that you need to replicate in your own art. What did I really like? What didn't I like? What ideas can I use to help make this a better piece in the future? I do hope that you have been inspired to go out and create your own mermaids. If you haven't heard of Mer Mermaid, I will definitely be participating next year. I will, will clear some space in my diary. And I hope that you will join in next year too, because I really want to see everyone else's ideas for mermaids. We should come up with another mythical month for like an art, art challenge. Hmm. There must be more of them. I'll have to have a look. Thank you so much for watching this video. I had an absolute blast making it. It was a joy. And I hope that you're now going to go make your own mermaids. And I hope that you're going to tune in to the next video. If you haven't or if you didn't hear me at the beginning, please subscribe. Pretty please. It's the big red button below. And please go, if you want to go and learn more about drawing or painting, go watch my other videos where I've got some more information about, <laughs> about those things on there. Thank you so much everyone for watching. I look forward to catching you all on the next video. I'm not sure what it's going to be about yet, but it'll probably be a lot of fun too. I think I'm going to do a video about drawing techniques. So maybe if you're a drawer, that might be more up your alley. But thank you so much for all of you who've watched this video. And if you've stuck it out to the end, well done. <laughs> and I am very grateful. Thank you so much. Bye everyone.